friends do you know which is the largest cantilever bridge in this world and to build this bridge two heavy structures collapsed down into the mighty St. Lawrence River. Today we have reached the pinnacle of modern success. We have left behind the success of hundreds of dazzling engineering. We have come across with the creation of many marvelous buildings, bridges, space stations, rockets, bullet trains and many more. And we are looking to go even further on the way forward. Amid so much success, the tragic story of Cubic Bridge lost somewhere, which collapsed twice before it was built and then rising again and being rebuilt. This double disaster during the Industrial Revolution shook the whole world. But today, amid hundreds of failures, criticism, the Cubic Bridge is standing tall with its head held high. Let's find the pages of history to find out what was the reason behind these two massive disasters? A fault in construction, metal fatigue or what? That remains to be discussed. Like and share this video if you find helpful. Subscribe to my channel Bucket List for many more fascinating videos. Hit the bell icon to get all the updates from my channel. By the end of the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution had just begun in England and was slowly spreading around the world. In this situation, Canada plans to build a cubic bridge over the mighty St. Lawrence River to strengthen their railways so that their new trade routes can be deepened. The bridge was built to connect Quebec City and the city of Levis. Before this bridge was built, the neighbors used to come and go by ferry, and in the dead of winter, when the St. Lawrence River was covered with ice, people kept commuting over the rock-hard cold river. Canadian government had selected Mr. Theodore Cooper, the famous American civil engineer who has already surprised everyone by building many dazzling bridges for the construction of the state-of-the-art bridge. Considering his past success, the Canadian government agreed to his plan to build the cantilever bridge. The Phoenix Bridge Company was responsible for designing this bridge. Their chief design engineer was Peter Slapka. Theodore Cooper and his colleague Edward Haar and Collingwood Schreiber were overseeing as consultant engineer on behalf of the QBRC Consulting Engineering Company. construction of the so much awaited bridge began in the year 1900. Despite many economic and political tensions, work on the bridge continues as planned and everyone was doing their job well. Suddenly, in 1906, Theodore Cooper noticed that the calculation made by the Phoenix Designs Company's engineer Peter Slapka contained a severe mistake. By then, the work on the bridge has progressed a lot, but he said not to be afraid and he did not stop the working. By the time the South Anchor Arm, its tower, two panels and the South Cantilever Arm had already been built. Extremely egoist, grumpy Theodore Cooper leapt to his New York office, stating his bad health. After that, he didn't visit the site. At the time, he relied on Edward Haar and Norman MacLeod. They had no experience to build such a big cantilever bridge before. After a long 18 months, much work was done by the June 1906. Earlier, Mr. MacLeod had repeatedly told him several times that there was a bend in the cord of South Cantilever Arm. The actual load of the section was much heavier than the actual design made by Mr. Peter Slapka before the structure was manufactured. Despite knowing all this, 
Theodore Cooper told to continue the work anticipating no harm will happen. He couldn't let go his ego. He had many disputes with the Phoenix Bridge Company in the past, but he never listened to anyone. Seeing the situation as it was going out of control, Norman MacLear decided to go to New York office to meet Mr. Theodore Cooper to tell about the actual condition of the bridge. Norman MacLear returned after discussion and met with the personnel of Phoenix Bridge Company and informed them to stop the work. But during the meeting around 5.38 p.m. August 29, 1907, the Quebec Bridge collapsed and sank into the cold water of St. Lawrence River. 65 workers lost their life and 11 workers survived by extreme luck. Only 16 out of 65 bodies were recovered from the rubble. The amount of damage at the time was $11 million. It took two long years to recover the wreckage from the ice called St. Lawrence River. Investigation into the cause of this collapse revealed that the bridge has collapsed due to the poor load calculations and improper design done by Mr. Peter Slavka of Phoenix Bridge Company, which had been approved by Theodore Cooper. And one of the reasons for this failure was the inadequate supervision during the construction. The dream didn't stop there, as the Canadian government wanted to build the Quebec Bridge with more robust and accurate design. Work started as planned, and after so much work, they reached the spinal stage, when the last span was to leap out of the river and attach it to the projected cantilever arm on both sides. The span again broke down on September 11, 1916. The substantial middle span of the bridge felt and sank again into the swift St. Lawrence River and killed 13 workers below. Franz Lichtenberg was in charge of the bridge at this time. The Canadian government completed the task of the bridge in August 1919 with a total cost of $25 million. Total of 88 workers lost their lives. With so many agonies, pains, failure and final success, the Quebec Bridge is standing tall with its head held high with a record of world longest cantilevered bridge with a center span of 549 meters. To memorize and cherish those happenings, the Canadian engineers used to wear an iron ring so that they can always adhere to the highest design safety and business ethics.